So mm-hmm. do you think life on another planet is likely to have something very similar to our DNA, RNA protein system, or do you think it could be a completely different self-replicating thing? Like, is it, is it likely that, That's that- the million dollar question, because right. if we're looking for carbon-based, DNA-based life uh, we, on other planets, we might miss it. So another, I, another way to word this, I think, is how inevitable in the biochemistry of an early planet is what happened here on this planet with DNA to RNA to folded proteins. Is that so inevitable that you're saying, yeah, any place we find life, is, it would have been through this. It would have arrived at the same solution. It would have found the same solution. Are you, are you prepared to say that? In other words, even like if we replay the t- if we really replay history on this planet, right, would we end up with essentially the same thing or could we end up with something quite different? I said the evolutionary landscape is vast, right? We're just with life as we know it, exploring a tiny, 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 tiny bit of that. And I believe that the idea of creating um, very minimal living systems from scratch will ultimately be able to help us to, to address these kind of kinds of questions, right? So you could, for instance, introduce metabolic pathways that are completely different from the ones that we know from life as we know it into such, such artificial systems and study them. So at the moment, we don't have evidence for silicon-based life, right? But um, I think there's, personally, I think there's also reasons for that, right? Like both of them can do, uh, can uh, can make four bonds, right? But, 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 uh, uh, but it seems that carbon is just much more versatile. Um, but, you know. Yeah, carbon in the universe is also like five times more abundant. So silicon sits right under carbon on the mm-hmm. periodic table. So just as she said, they can each bond four ways. It, 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 everything in that column can. So carbon has four, uh, four electrons in its outer shell, and it can take four more, right? Which is a highly versatile situation to be in and but silicon can do that too but we don't need i i would be fun to find silicon based life we just don't need it because carbon is everywhere in the universe it does the same job but kind of better but yeah so so do do astrobiologists call you and get your insights into what they might be looking for I would say the field is very, very interdisciplinary. Bottom-up synthetic biology is very interdisciplinary, and um, we are for sure we are for sure keeping the discussion entirely open um, with astrobiologists and really also think about you know implementing um, well solutions that evolution may not have explored, right? And so, so, so that's for sure a super interesting communi- uh, conversation to be had. You know something evolution did not come up with a four-legged vertebrate creature that also has wings <laughs> but we've, we've we have pegasus pegasus popped some wings out his back right that that is not in the plan okay so when you look at life on earth do you say here's something that evolution could have should have maybe but didn't but it it does see again from my limited knowledge it does seem that evolution does seem to keep landing on the same solutions for oh interesting. you know like there are, there are a bunch of different animals that have evolved through different pathways the same things yeah yeah Karsten, is that that i, I like the, what he said there is that the same at the lower level or? yeah evolution has found similar pathways to solve its survival problems that in some are even unrelated but they land in the same place so that might give you insight, does it, to for uh, what biochemistry likes? Yeah, and and I think one place where we could see this, for instance, is that when we build our la- life, our our very very minimal um, synthetic cell as the minimal unit of life, and I don't mean really a cell as we know it, but uh, a very very simple version of that, essentially, that that cell is by far not as efficient as life as we know it because its ba- its catalytic activity is based on RNA and RNA catalysis is much slower than what proteins can do. And the moment you introduce proteins to the system, so a way of having translation of, 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 um, of making, producing proteins inside of a synthetic cell, you may find that this is actually 
uh, a much more efficient solution. So this may be why we don't see an RNA world around us anymore, simply because, you know, once you have proteins, they win in a direct competition. But again, if we start with a simple system, evolution may bring about um, these more complex systems, right? So in fact, in fact, um, if you look at the ribosome, the, so the ribosome is the component in the cell which is responsible for turning RNA into protein. So it's doing this translation inside of the cell. Then that ribosome, the catalytic activity, the core of the catalytic activity actually comes from RNA and not protein. So indeed, we have some of the most intricate molecular machines that uh, cells use today are actually RNA based. We want when the aliens come, we want you in the room when that happens so that you might be able to understand what kind of life they are. Right. You'd be perfectly suited for this. Is that correct? Well, let's see what they look like. Right. <laughs> I may or may not. As I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong. All life on Earth has a certain handedness in its molecules, like it's all left handed or it's all right, whatever it is, because some molecules are they're they're not symmetric, mm -hmm. like they're mirror versions of them. Right. And so we're all one kind of molecule. Which one is it, left or right-handed? I forgot which it is. Left-handed, yeah. So that origins of homo chirality, actually. Um, so the handedness of life, so to say, is another very, very interesting question. So in fact, we talked about the Miller-Urey experiment, right, where amino acids were produced. And actually in that experiment, a racemic mixture of these, of these molecules was produced. So the left-handed version as well as the right-handed version, right? So that experiment does not solve the origins of homo chirality at all. And that's an, another very, very interesting um, field of study, I have to say. Um, of course, the molecules that we use are all the standard handedness, you know, that life uses today. This might be a dumb question, but of the left handed and right handedness of the molecules, which one's good and which one's evil? <laughs> 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 well, I'd say which one has nature chosen, and that's the left handed one, yeah. That's a separate lab they're working on that. Oh, okay, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.